next 15 minutes, we will introduce you to the components that make up the Semintel Territory Cavity Walling System, the specific tools required for installation and the key steps to follow to ensure a trouble-free quality install. The core component of the Semintel Territory Cavity Walling System is a cement bonded fibrous wood particle wall panel. This comes in a two pack in 3.03 metre lengths and is available in a variety of pre-finished options. Panels are designed with a tongue and groove profile. A compressible sealing strip is bonded onto the tongue profile on the top edge of the panel. This fits neatly into the groove profile on the bottom edge of the panel to form a weather resistant joint. Installation starts with placing the first panel onto the starter strip and as you work up, the wall panels are supported by horizontal clips attached to the studs with screws. A 15 mm thick green spacer is used anywhere a clip cannot be used to attach the boards and where it's necessary to maintain an even cavity clearance. There is a horizontal spacer where the holes run down the short side of the spacer as well as a vertical spacer where the holes run down the long side of the spacer strip. These spacers are held in place on the frame using regular nails. Cementel supplies face fixed nails to use where panel clips cannot be used, like for the top panel at the roof line or under and above windows or doors. These are designed to sit flush with the face of the board. The outer corners can be formed using either an aluminium corner trim or preformed corners matching the texture and height of the boards. Narrower corner clips are used to attach the preformed corners to the frame. A double flanged Galvalume steel control joint is used between the preformed corner and the panels, as well as at each vertical junction between panels. Single flange control joints are available for internal corners or for other situations where a double flange joint cannot be used. After installation, these joints are prepared with supplied primer and sealed using a colour matched joint sealant. Various profile E finishes are available to suit different applications. Flashing, insulation and sarking or rigid air barrier will finalise the preparation of the frame before installation of the cladding panels. You will need the standard carpentry tools used for fixing to wooden frames. A drill with a 3mm drill bit will be needed to prepare nail holes for the occasional panel that requires nailing to the frame. Cutting the fibre cement panels will require a diamond tipped blade plunge saw with a vacuum system to manage the dust generated. Metal cutting tools are required to cut the aluminium corner supports if used as well as to cut or notch the expansion control joints as required. When cutting, take proper precautions by wearing protective clothing, eyewear and face mask. The first step is to prepare the frame, ensuring to make it square and plumb before affixing any product. This may require packing some studs to create a uniform fixing plane. For external corners, where you plan to use the preformed corners, you will need to ensure there is at least a 90mm surface on each face of the corner to allow room for fixing the corner clips as well as the standard horizontal panel clip. In fact, double studs will be required wherever columns of wall panels are joined. Once the frame is flush and plumb, fit your flashing, insulation and wall wrap as normal. The back of the front face of aluminium windows, or any protruding object with a reveal, needs to be set 35mm out from the face of the whole frame. When ordering windows, it is really important to take account of the cavity depth when determining the size of the window so that the back of the face of the window when installed sits flush with the panels. This allows the wall panels to slide snugly into this gap 
allowing a weather-tight seal. As there is no space to use a mounting clip along the bottom and top edge of the window, tack a horizontal green spacer in place to provide a firm surface for the cladding panel to maintain its position. Fit head flashing over the window or protrusion as per manufacturer's instructions. The next step is to install the starter strip. Find the lowest point of the flashing where you'll be installing your panelling and measure up 26 millimetres from this point. 16 millimetres is the overhang of the board when it sits on the starter strip. The first row of boards needs to be positioned to clear the flashings by 10 millimetres. Or in the case where you're working from ground level to whatever minimum height your local building regulations specify. Screw the starter strip level along the whole length of the strip to every stud, usually 450 or 600 millimetre centres. Because each panel sits on top of the other, any errors in setting the level on the first wall panel will be compounded through each layer. It is therefore absolutely critical to ensure the starter strip is fitted 100% level, ready to accept the first panel. The next step is to install the external corners. Installing the preformed corner requires care. Each corner piece matches the panel's design. It has the same groove at the bottom and tongue at the top. Slide your first corner piece down your corner and over the starter strip. Then insert the narrower corner clip on each side and screw to the stud. It is important to ensure that each corner piece is square on both sides. If the corners are not square, pack out the clips. To add the next corner piece, just slide it on top so that it sits firmly on the clips. Secure another set of clips to the top, ensuring squareness by packing out as required. Once you have these installed, it is time to add the double flange Galvalume steel control joint spacer. This slides right in behind the corner piece. It only needs to be attached to the frame at a couple of points so it doesn't fall down or move. It operates as a 10mm spacer between columns of wall panels as well as a surface for the corking to sit on. The aluminium corner option is the most straightforward to install. When cutting to length, remember to deduct the height measurement of the eaves trim. Cut and notch out for fitting over the starter strip. To maintain the 15mm cavity, first tack green spaces on each side of the corner stud. Allow a small amount of breathing room at the top. Fix the eave corner piece. Then, ensuring the corner trim is level, Nail it through the spacer to your frame. From here, you will see that the wall panel just fits into the corners channel and then slides down over the starter strip. When cutting panels, it is important that any cut edges are sealed with Sementel's recommended edge sealer to protect against any moisture entering the panels. Place your first wall panel over your starter strip and slide into place. Screw horizontal panel clips to every stud or 450mm centres.
It is likely you'll have issues with the squareness of the frame. Pack out the affected clips to ensure a uniform fixing plane. We recommend you consult your local building surveyor regarding appropriate materials for packing. As we prepare to finish off the top panel, first attach the green spacer strips to ensure we maintain the 15mm cavity. Slide eaves trim into the eaves corner piece. Cut the top panel 10mm shorter than the height inside of the eaves trim to allow lifting of the final panel and dropping into place. Mark the position of the studs to identify fastening points. Next, pre-drill your nail holes to ensure the panels don't split or that the nails don't bend. Now, nail the studs using the Sementel supplied face fix nails. To finish off the installation, cork all the control joints with a supplied colour matched sealant. First, apply masking tape to each side of the joint and at the base. Then, paint the edges of the panels with the primer. This helps the sealant adhere to the panels. Wait at least 30 minutes but no more than 6 hours to apply the sealant. Smooth off the finish, removing excess sealant. Carefully remove masking tape in accordance with manufacturer's instructions. Finishing the job now simply requires a wipe down with a damp cloth and touching up of exposed nail heads with matching touch up paint.